This is the new ZMX FinX30. ZMX is a company that's been around for a while, and um, they were probably they're probably well known for um, their original motors that they made a while ago, which were pretty good. Actually, they weren't their original motors; they were their second tier motors that they made, and they were the first really good motors. And they employed Brother Hobby to make those motors, and then Brother Hobby started making the same kind of quality and grade motor for many other rebrands and so ZMX got upset because they were just copying their tech and um, selling it without asking them or giving them any royalties so they left Brother Hobby and made their own company and since then they've made a couple of other motors and this is their newest line and there's something very very special about this line but before I continue I want to say something about motors so the price tag of motors are kind of kind of ridiculous and at this point I don't I don't know if they really make total sense I mean the top tier motors will run you anywhere from $25 to $30, maybe even higher than $30. Now, what are you actually getting for that money? I, I don't I don't really know how you can sell a motor for, I mean, you need four of these things to fly, and if you break one, which happens pretty often, it's pretty painful to break a $40 motor or something. So, I, honestly, I, I mean, I even would not like to spend, I don't even like $25 per motor, that's, that's still pretty high. So I really ask people that are spending this money, what are you actually getting for your money and what what is in the motor that's making it so valuable? Well, I can tell you that the construction of the motor really does make a difference and, and that is something that you should definitely look at. But there's also not much discussion about the, about the construction and what makes the motor so good or so valuable, which is the unfortunate part. So that being said, let's get to what makes this motor so special. This motor has actual innovative technology in it that should make a real difference in flight and it actually does matter and that is these ridges on the side so these ridges do something very very special and it's a little difficult to explain so I'll kind of gloss over it and give you a minor explanation so that you can go off and do your own research if you like but if you look up what a hallback array is I left the link in the description below that you can watch a video that describes it very nicely and it's very amazing it's a very amazing setup I don't know when it was developed who came up with it probably made a long long time ago like before any electricity or anything existed. But basically what it is is magnets have a special field. So you probably know that magnets have a north and a south pole and uh, they have, if you look at a magnetic field, it's not like it's not like a circle and it's not like a column or something. It's like two orbs on either side of the magnet. Two orbs on either side of the magnet. One is south, one is, one is north. And those fields interact with other magnetic entities and just with other metal objects, things that are ferrous and magnetic and, or have magnetic properties in general. So what a hallback array is, is, is aligning magnets in a certain series or a certain order with certain directionality that can redirect the magnetic field of the motor, which is also called the flux of the, of the magnet. So what these ridges are doing, the rings around these motors, this is something I did not even, I had new, no, I, no, I never even considered thinking about this until I saw this motor and started talking to them about it. The ring around these motors are actually ferrous. They are magnetic. They have, a, they have an iron property to them. And uh, I don't know, I mean, the metal is, is meaningless. It's just that they have magnetic properties to them and the thickness of them matters. I think Hobby King had a magnet that had a carbon fiber bell and I think it just died super quick because people realized it just wasn't very good. And this is the reason why. These, this, this metal around the sides actually does something for the magnets. So the magnets that we're using in these motors, that are being used in these motors, are pretty good. They're pretty strong. I, I highly doubt that they're the best of the best of the best magnets in the world because that would just be too expensive for the Hobby. But they're as strong as they can get with reasonable cost. And what these ridges do is they actually redirect the flux of the magnets back in towards the motor. And to show you the effect and how strong of an effect that actually is, I'm going to show you this this quad. And check out this, the Hyperlite 2307 motor. Look at this. I can move the quad with the magnetic field of the, of the motor side. So now I'm going to use the other motor, ZMX motor. Even if I just lightly touch, I, just, I cannot get it to stick hard enough <laughs> to move the quad. It doesn't matter where on the side, but this with this motor, it's no problem. It will move fine. And that is the first thing I, I didn't even test that. I opened the box of all these things and put them together on the table. And I was shocked because the motors were not sticking together on the table like normally motors do. They don't just, they don't, they didn't like attract each other. And then I started feeling, I'm like, whoa. 
this is I can't even feel the magnetic field on the outside so these these ridges on the side actually do work but what does that actually mean for flight performance well I'll get to that let me go over the other specs of the motor which are what really make it a valuable motor so this is a very premium motor in, in all sense. It is made of 7075 aluminum, which is the highest aluminum we have. The base of the, mo of the motor is also 7075. It has a nice thick ring around it that you can't tell. You can tell when you take the stator off, but um, when you take the bell off. But you'll notice that the, the bottom is a little bit thinner than the Hyperlite motor, which I asked, asked well, isn't that going to break? And they said, no, you should use four motor screws. And I 100% um, agree with that. I don't know why people use two motor screws on their motor. It's it's just a bad idea to me. It doesn't save any weight. Use three or four aluminum screws. It's going to be more weight savings than two steel screws. So use four screws. You will not have any problems and you won't break your, your, your frame arms as often either. So the metal is 7075. You'll see the shaft is long enough to fit a full prop nut and the washer with zero problems. There's ridges in the top here which are made to grip the prop which do a surprisingly good job. They really do dig into the prop. They have really nice, uh, like, like the edge is really sharp to them. So they really do dig into the prop, and it's really good. You see imprints of them on the bottom of the prop after tightening the, the nut. The wires, these are these are cut wires. I've actually cut like a good 20 centimeters off this. I think they're like 130 centimeters long, which is the longest wires I've seen on any motor. Um, it has a screw bottom, which I've already taken off the the screw shaft. The shaft is four millimeters all the way through. Oh, I can't get it off. Like, uh, gosh. These Darn motors. God, it will destroy my fingers getting apart. They're so strong. All right, so now when you look at the inside, you see the windings are, are nice, single-stranded, high-temperature windings. The um, laminations are very thin. Can't tell if they're 0.1 or 0.15. They tell me what's more important is the infill of the uh, stator, which is 85%. They say that's a very significant number. I have no idea. I have no, no clue what to compare that to. They say most motors are more like 65 75%. This is 85%. Okay, fine. Uh, the magnets are strong and 52 as they claim. I, I don't know if these numbers really mean anything really because you just can't tell what's in the motor, but they feel very strong. Um, the, you will notice that the bell actually has a lip at the bottom here, and I'm assuming that's to prevent the magnets from slipping down, which I don't know why every single motor manufacturer doesn't do that. It's so obvious to do, so they will probably not have any problem with <laughs> the slipping of magnets on this motor. At least I hope not. The shaft, as I, as I said, is four millimeter. It's titanium all the way through. The bearings are also four millimeter bearings. They tell me that the, that the actual ball bearing size is a little bit smaller than they'd like, but they're super duper smooth bearings. So uh, the small ball bearings are apparently less durable and they probably are gonna move to a different bearing when they find a good one, a larger ball bearing version of some sort. I, I don't really know. There is no motor that really has durable ball bearings in them. I mean, they all go bad pretty quickly or in crashes. So I'm not really expecting wonders from any bearing at all. Uh, motor goes together really nicely. It's pretty even. All the ones I received are super duper even. The air gap on them, which I didn't go over, is super tight, as you can see here. And um, one other thing which I didn't mention, which I'll talk about right now, is the notchy feeling of the bell. So a lot of people pick up a motor and they kind of spin it to feel that notchy feeling and they equate that with power, a lot of power and performance. And while that might make a difference when the motor is constructed similarly, you can feel the notchiness and you can look at the air gap and see how tight it is and how strong it feels. It really is not ideal, and that's, again, something I learned with the ZMX motor and by talking to these guys. You don't want this notchy feeling. <clears throat> this notchy feeling is not a good thing. What it's telling you, what it's showing you for each notch is how much magnetic field you're losing. So you can feel the difference between the low and the high of the magnetic field. That's what the notch is telling you. And the notchier the motor is, the more magnetic field you're losing. So that's a bad thing. Although it does show, show you how strong the magnets are if the notch is the same from motor to motor. With the ZMX motor, you don't feel hard, like not even half as much notchiness. But the air gap is the same. The magnets are just as strong. Everything is the same. It's the same construction quality, but just much less notchy. And this is, again, what the hallback array, what this magnetic ring and this construction and the engineering has done for the motor. So now let's discuss what this actually does for flight performance and what this motor was designed for. This motor was designed for heavy props. And the first time I flew it, uh, this, is, this is the true 2600 kV version of the motor and it's actually 2610 kV. And when I first flew it, uh, it did not feel that great. Uh, I did. There, there was. There is going to be a lower KV version and a higher KV version also. But this is the true 2610 KV version, and it was. It felt indistinguishable from any other motor really. With a 5x4x3 prop on it, it felt the same. 
But then I talked to them and they're like, yeah, well, it wasn't made for a 5x4x3, which makes total sense because it's a huge motor for a 5x4x3. So they said put a 50-50 cyclone on it, which is what it was intended to fly. And when I put the 50-50 cyclone on it, well, I couldn't tell the difference between the 50-50 and the 5x4x3 in terms of the wispiness, the uh, aggression of performance, and the um, response of the motor. And that's exactly what they made it for. They made the motor to handle super heavy props like they're light, like they're nothing. And you see here, I'm running the AVAN prop on this motor. And the reason I'm running the AVAN prop on this motor is because it's designed for a super heavy prop and it flies a super heavy prop like a lighter prop. So the amp draw is, I mean, it's not, it's not like a night and day difference, but what these ridges are doing is they're gonna make, they're making the motor much more efficient. When you put a five by four by three on it, it doesn't really have any more efficiency, but when you put a super heavy prop on it, all of a sudden you realize, oh, hey, I can actually run this prop and it's not totally destroying my battery. Now, don't get me wrong, the amp draw is still ridiculous on any high amp draw prop but it's, a, it's, it's better on this motor. It's noticeably better. I'm getting two and a half minutes pretty solid on a 600 gram acro build with an AVAN or a 50-50 Cyclone. And I did a bunch of testing between props. I did about exactly six batteries from prop to prop. Good batteries, bad batteries, everything in between. And I measured the amp draw based on my uh, OSD meter, it's, which is not calibrated, but I'm doing it within the same quad. So it's, it's I mean, I would consider that pretty legitimate to read. Not Nothing about this is scientific, but the 5050 Cyclone draws 5% more amps than the AVAN prop. Now, the AVAN prop, everybody knows, is a is a very high amp draw prop. It's an extreme amp draw prop, not even high. And uh, I'm only talking about maximum throttle amps, not talking about anything in, in the middle. But the 5050 Cyclone draws 5% more amps on this motor than the AVAN prop. And the 5046 draws 3% less amps than the AVAN prop. I mean, that's pretty impressive to me that now the AVAN prop is, is a reasonable prop to fly on this motor because the amp draw is almost reasonable. It, I mean, it's still crazy high, but <laughs> it's more reasonable than on other motors. And that's what they really intended this for. So my expectations for this motor was that I'm gonna get, you know, crazy performance and crazy torque and crazy power, but that, that is absolutely not the case. You're not gonna, first and foremost, if you're getting this motor, you're probably already a pretty good pilot. And you're not getting this motor for crazy performance, crazy amp draw, because I mean, the performance limits that we've hit on these motors are, are pretty much, they're really high already. I'm, I'm not expecting to see any jump in performance from motor to motor, but the amps for heavy props on this motor is more reasonable. And that's what you pay the money for, and that's what the innovation is, and that's what the motor has done. That's what they've intended this motor for. And I actually do see that in actual real world flying as well. Something else super interesting about this motor is that, well, first of all, it doesn't run, there's, at no point in any of my flying did this motor get hot. It did not even get warm, which is pretty darn impressive, because I was really, I was burning this motor, and today it's like 108 degrees, so it, 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 I, I couldn't even believe it. Uh, I don't have flight video in this, in this video, because I just, there's really no point to a flight video in, um, in any motor review, because you can't tell any difference at all. So I'll post one later, but it really, I mean, there's no point in posting it in this video. They say that the optimal RP, uh, the optimal KV for this motor, based on their math, is 3,200 KV, and they're actually gonna test a 3,000 KV version of this motor. And I told them I'd be very interested in that because that sounds like a fantastic motor for a five by four by three prop, which I like very, very much. And the other thing is that, okay, so one other thing about motors, it's a complete fallacy that people think that low KV is more torquey. That is, is not the case, at least in the real world. And also the ZMX people say the same thing. It's that the low KV doesn't mean anything. The torque comes from the motor, the magnets, the construction of the motor. It doesn't so much come from the, the KV. It just needs to be a reasonable KV so the motor doesn't burn itself out. And high KV, as far as I can feel, feels like it draws more amps and gives you kind of a more torque feeling because it's drawing more amps to do any maneuver executions or whatever you're doing. So it's going to be interesting to see this motor in the 3000 kV and 2600 kV for a 2207 motor is pretty darn high but it's reasonable for this motor. <laughs> it, the way it performs and the way it flies that is reasonable. So two things this, this innovation and the technology has done. They made a heavy prop fly like a lighter prop and they made high KV reasonable in a, in a very high, large stator motor, which 2207.3, when I measured it, it's 2207.3 millimeters, which I also forgot to mention. 
is a large stator motor. Okay, so I'm, I'm just babbling on now. I'm just talking off the top of my head. I, I wish I had more time to do in-depth technical reviews of motors, but I think you've gotten a sense for what I think about this motor and generally what I think about high-end or, or high-priced motors in general. Look for value, look for innovation, look for performance, absolutely. Mini Quad Test Bench by Ryan Harrell is the absolute pillar of all things in our hobby. I think it's probably the single best website in the sport that we have access to and I thank him tremendously for everything that he does. He does so much with these motors and doing these motor tests and you can tell so much from motor to motor just by looking at the, at the charts and really comparing them really closely. Look at that chart. If there's a motor that you're considering that you want to buy, definitely, definitely check out that chart. Um, that's all I have for you today. Uh, long video as usual these days. Don't forget to floss. Bye.